730, 92.1, WROI, WROI, FM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5. Streaming audio and video live on RTC Channel 4. Hello, Scott. Good morning, sir. Nice to have you back in the studio today. Thank you, sir. Bright lights and everything. Yes, sir. What a guy. And on your smartphone or your Android, you can download the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going which, of course, on Friday is the First Federal Savings Bank, where you'll say hi to Dick Belcher. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Scott. Good morning, sir. You've been here this week? I am not. This is the first time this week. First time this, first time this yes. week. That's right. And his coffee cup didn't get used. <laughs> yeah, that's all we could yeah, tell. He hasn't been here this week. Hey, we're going to have a great weekend. The we weather's going to be good. It's going to be a good day today. We've got the Kentucky Derby coming up right. tomorrow. Mother's Day on Sunday. Mother's Day. Yeah. What more could you ask? Oh, that's it. Graduations all, are yeah. happening. All chalked into one weekend. How about that? Yeah. Uh, Ken Zirko, we're glad to have you here, president of Ancilla. You just told me that uh, Ancilla's graduation is tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock, 93 students graduating Excellent. tomorrow morning. Largest class, I think, ever. Excellent. Wow. Uh, also, Ivy Tech Kokomo is having their graduation tomorrow. Okay. And uh, they got a few more students than that. Yeah. But, uh, folks, uh, okay. <coughs> Hillary and Donald. Looks like it. I don't Any? see much change in that between now and November. Mm, no, no. Well, if you remember last week what I said yeah. about the election. Yeah. Just wanted to emphasize that. Okay. Now, in the uh, USA Today supplement of the Indianapolis Star, in the business section, it, here's the headline: Wall Street not sure who is worse, Trump or Hillary. Well, you know, you take a look at their unfavorable ratings, and they both have substantial ones when it comes down to that. Wow. Something else. Casey and Cruz, they're out. They're out. Yeah, they're out. Playing, playing well, ball. I see Mr. Pence, Governor Pence, came out favoring Trump. Surprise, surprise. After Cruz? He was the yeah, first he, he favored. Yesterday. He okay. Came out. Well, you know, he's, he's got to get on the right ship. That's all there is to it. Yeah. His endorsement. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Didn't do much, did it? Yeah. May have hurt uh, Mr. Cruz. Pretty interesting statistics from uh, election night, by the way, in Fulton County. Yes. 4,200 Republican ballots were cast. Only 3,100 of those voted for Governor Pence, which means 1,100 people in Fulton County did not vote for Governor Pence. That's scary. And he was unopposed. If I were him, I'd be scared. Well, I'd, I'd be working hard. Hey, well, he's Work hard. He's got a new lieutenant governor. Gonna, he does, Mr. Holcomb. Uh, did you know this is National Nurses Day? I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you know that? I did not. Okay. It's good to know. I'm glad to know. But yeah. Back to it's the a college. good thing we came in this morning. Yeah, Holy absolutely. smoke. Think of what we learned already. <laughs> wow. Okay. <clears throat> you ready for a little trivia? I'm ready. <clears throat> okay. Pay attention, Scott. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kentucky Derby's running tomorrow, 145th, I think. 142nd. Let's see. <laughs> What's sure? that drink that they have at the uh, Kentucky Derby? Mint julep. Mint julep. Yeah. yeah. You ever try to make one of those I things? Not. Holy smoke, 75 ingredients. I'll tell you this. <laughs> and they don't even taste that good. No? No. I think I lost control. <laughs> 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 How do we get to mint julep? <laughs> okay, at the Kentucky Derby, what jockey has won the most uh, derbies? Is it Eddie R. Car Carroll? Bill at Hartack or Mario Grudnez. Okay, we'll think about that. All right, at least we got a multiple choice. Yeah. Nyquist is a favorite tomorrow. Yes. Three to one. Right. You betting on him, Scott? I'm not a betting man. Don't count out that horse though that uh, Bill Baffert is uh, the trainer of. Um, starting, I think, in the 17th position. I can't think of the horse's name, but he's the guy that won it all last year. You got hurt the horse's ego when you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't tell him. Don't tell him, gee. Okay, what did you think of the NFL draft? Oh, it was all right. Jared Goff? 
number one? Yep. I thought it was all right for the Colts. Yeah. They needed a center, and they got a center, and that's good. Big guy. Man, he's a big guy. Is he? Wow. Okay, speaking of the Colts, what do you think of Vogel getting fired yesterday? Well, that was a, that's the Pacers, but uh, Pacers, I think right. that was a mistake. Only time will tell, of course. It goes back to the Bobby Knight days when you better be careful what you wish for or right. a lot of people wishing he was gone. Yeah, yeah. but he, Frank, Frank had five good years Yeah, with the Pacers. Now you got to remember, so, he took over a team that was pretty dismal. Oh, they were bad. Why, uh, what, what, uh, why did Bird get rid of him? Larry likes a new voice in the locker room. He, he, he goes back to the Red Arback theory of having a new voice every four or five years. Is that right? Yeah, kind of regardless of how the team's doing. But yet some of the most stable franchises have coaches that have been there five, six, eight, ten years. Mm. This one's on Larry. We'll see how this all works out. Okay, Scott, what do you think of your Cubs? I love my Cubs. They won again last night. You see John Lester throw his mitt to the first baseman to make the out? No. That, that was pretty cute. <laughs> Couldn't get the glove off, so he just threw the whole glove to the first baseman. <laughs> They're 21 and 6 now, aren't they? They're playing well, especially yeah. without Schwarber. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I uh, I was uh, watching Trump interviewed on CNBC yesterday. He was talking about interest rates and the debt that uh, the U.S. has. Oh, it's huge. If if interest rates go up a point, it's unbelievable oh. how much more money it's going to cost uh, to meet that debt. So you know his point was there are no incentive for the Fed to raise rates. Right. How many how many zeros are there in a in a trillion? Twelve, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine. How many zeros in a trillion? More than on my paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Yeah, we should. <laughs> See, he's asking the questions. <laughs> okay, come on down. The first federal we're open today till 5 o'clock. Tomorrow, 8.30 to noon. ATM, our new ATM. Beautiful machine. Open. Beautiful. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We offer FHA and USDA loans. If you're thinking of buying a home, uh, talk with one of our loan originators. That can help you determine if this is the type of loan uh, that, that will suit your needs. We also offer free pre-approvals, which can give you an idea of how much of a home you can afford based on uh, unverified uh, information that you give us. Now, a lot of realtors are requiring it that and that's a good idea that, sure. gives, that gives them an idea of what maybe what uh, you might be might qualify for borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines and delivery fee may be applicable to the loan our loan originators can provide information on how any delivery fee may impact the loan's annual percentage rate First Federal's FDIC insured and an equal housing lender and our NMLS number is three nine or nine or nine or twenty seven you know I noticed around the area and you can comment on this uh, some new construction going on yes and that's a good thing oh yeah yeah lots of uh, it's really improved we got uh, considerably more construction loans going on now than uh, than we had in the past and uh, things are really popping there do you, so. do, you do you detect more optimism yes okay yeah and delinquencies are down, and that's really a that's good always thing. a good thing too. Sure. One thing I miss is some upcoming events. Friends of Fulton County Public Library book sale today. Ah, first Friday of the month. Yep, 10 a.m. to 5:30. A craft and vendor bazaar is 9 to 2 Saturday at the Fulton County Museum. They've got a homemade stuff there: jewelry, wreaths, quilts, and so forth. Rochester High School Greenhouse is open 8 a.m. to noon Saturday and May 14th, uh, 3 to 5. Uh, they got a lot of plants down there. You do? And uh, vegetable and flowers are available. Uh, plants are grown by the horticulture students. Max and Kentucky uh, Singers will perform 7.30 p.m. May 12th at the Community Presbyterian Church, 530 Jefferson Street. 
a Mother's Day event is planned two to four, two to six Saturday at the Kiwana Union Volunteer Fire Department in Kiwana. The event features several vendors and food sales, door prizes, and a 50-50 drawing. Rochester Dairy Queens donating 10% of sales from four to close Tuesday uh, to the Rochester Metal Products Relay Team. Okay. <clears throat> Next week is uh, National Hospital Week. Yes, it is. And also the uh, community uh, fair, health fair is next Saturday. Woodlawn Hospital, 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Yes, and we're next week uh, we're going to have some hospital people Excellent. Talk, talk about that. And uh, uh, you, you can get the details of that, of what they're offering and the small cost that's involved in the Rochester Sentinel today. Rochester Wrestling Club is conducting its Rent a Wrestler program through the end of August. Cost is $10 per person per hour. Call Clint Guard if you're interested, 835-1732. Any resident of Fulton County can participate in the Fulton County Solid Waste District new trash pickup. Going to be uh, coming in here shortly and uh, it's a, a new thing. Okay. And, uh, that uh, they're going to sell you bags for three dollars each, and so you that uh, is a new program right here. Okay, under milestones, uh, Breezy King Reed Romine celebrated her 90th birthday this week, and uh, we got to mention about Gordon Tacklett uh, that uh, he's a longtime friend of Fulton and Marshall County passed away, and uh, uh, he was on the Ancilla board for many years. Oh, many, many years, yes. And uh, he's uh, <coughs> had uh, elevator operations in Monterey and Lighters Ford, and a uh, great individual, and our condolences to the Tacklett, Tacklett family. Well, having said that, we're uh, it, welcome uh, <coughs> Dr. Ken Zickler. Zickle. Zirkle. Zirkle. Just okay. like circle, but a Z. Okay. <laughs> okay. President of Ancilla College, and also uh, Todd Zeltwander, who's the Vice President of Development. Welcome, Todd. Thank you. Good Thank you. Good, good, to, be good to be here. Okay, now, what is anything happening on the Ancilla <laughs> campus? You know, we just closed it down. Did you? Okay. <laughs> you know, okay, you're, you're graduating 90-something yesterday, uh, tomorrow. tomorrow, and uh, you think that's probably a record in I believe that's my right. recollection. Uh, Having the privilege of uh, being on that board for a few years is that is a lot of years. Yes, and we're very excited that the program begins at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, and the students are ready to go. It's a good group, graduating a good group of, of uh, people this year. Many of them going on to four-year schools, which is something that uh, we're very proud of. And uh, part of, about 50 percent of our students come in, and that's their intent: transfer to a four-year school and. The other 50% we think are ready to go to work and do a good job. Okay. Okay, now some people out there maybe on the highway driving by uh, don't know anything about Ancilla. Okay. Tell us where you're located and a little bit about the school. Well, Ancilla is an associate degree college and uh, it's been in existence for a number of years now. Uh, uh, poor Handmaids of Jesus Christ started that, that institution. And um, we're located, I would say, about what ten miles from Plymouth. Todd would yeah. be close, uh, right off of uh, right off of thirty. And um, beautiful campus. Uh, Donaldson is the Donaldson address. is the ad actual address. Donaldson's okay. not a very big community, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it, I, I notice your address, your post office box one. Yes. Box one. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, uh, I don't know if they had to fight to get box one or not. But, but Are there other boxes? <laughs> we don't talk about that. That's right. Right. It's the, the important one is box one That's right. in Donaldson. Uh, a lot of excitement going on there. We know this uh, past year we opened our first ever residence hall. Uh, we were hoping for about 90 students in that residence hall, room for 92. We didn't begin marketing that until in March last year. We didn't begin construction until March 10th, and we had to have it open in the middle of August, and uh, we made it. I was hoping, as the president, I was hoping we'd get 65 or 70 students in that first year because we were late. 
we opened with 117 wow. in our residence hall. Amazing. So we had to triple every room for the men. You're, you're like some hotel you overbooked. <laughs> we overbooked. <laughs> we really did. And, uh, uh, and that's exciting to know yes, that, that, that level of interest in the, in the institution. And uh, uh, that's going rather smoothly. And it was to such a degree that then we opened a new dining hall uh, complex in January. And so uh, a lot of excitement there. And then and the second residence hall will open in mid-July this year. Excellent. Okay, Todd, uh, what's your job at the, at the college? Uh, Dick, I'm the Vice President of, Devel of Development, which is mainly with, uh, has to do with fundraising. And, no kidding. Uh, and talking to people yeah. there. Yeah, we have a lot the of numbers. you out. see the card with <laughs> development on it. Yeah, I think that you run. Yeah. Hold your wallet tight, man. But uh, <clears throat> no, we have a lot of people out there that give to us uh, every year. We have some very generous people. and. Uh, it's, it's just been great to see you know, how the school is now taking off and enrollment and growing and people looking at us now as, as, a, as a viable investment, if you will, in our community and uh, we're serving a lot of needs. A lot of the students that come to us um, have financial need. Uh, about Forty percent of our student population have a zero expected family contribution towards the cost of education, which requires more people to give to us that we can give that money out to help. Uh, those students uh, with their tuition and all expenses. The, uh, the group, the uh, tomorrow, will have a lot of first generation college students graduating. And wow, a lot of those families so that, that come in and are, get to be a part of that experience in our chapel um, upstairs. It's a really neat uh, thing to see. And they come out of there with that smile on their face, doing something differently that you know hasn't been done in their families before. Well, Dr. Ken, uh, tell us about some of the plans that you have for the future. Well, one of the exciting things is we're beginning this year with the new agriculture program. Uh, it seems strange to me when I when I first came here that we were every place I drove we, you saw soybeans, you saw corn, you saw animals, and yet we didn't have an ag program. So we're working very closely with uh, with Purdue and and uh, have a a wonderful program set up that to come to to Ancilla for two years, get the education, get the training, and so forth. And if they have the right grades, which are not out of line at all, direct entree into Purdue's agriculture program. And uh, they seem to the Purdue officials that are in charge that are very excited about it, and so are we. Uh, a gentleman named Tim McLaughlin will be the director of our program. He starts on July 1st. Tim is uh, over at John Glenn, has been at John Glenn for many, many years, outstanding, uh, well known throughout the state of Indiana and the, and the ag areas, and uh, we feel very fortunate uh, to have him come in and direct our, our future in that, in that area. Okay, some people out there that are listening to this and watching it say, uh, oh, I'm interested in that. How do they get more information and can they get into that school this fall? Yeah, we still, you know, we're a two-year school, so two-year schools are a little different than the four-year, where it's where I spent most of my life. Many four-year colleges, your your enrollment period is over for this coming fall. The busy time for two-year schools is just now beginning, so we have room for people to enroll at, at this point in time. And they would just contact the admissions office at uh, at Ancilla and. Uh, uh, set up an interview and, and uh, go, go from there, but there will be room to get into that program. We are seeing probably even more early interest than I anticipated, which is good. Uh, a lot of people in the region uh, would like to stay home and, and still work on the farm. A lot of them have, I've talked to a lot of the young ladies that have their own horses and they hate those, and they're not quite, and a lot of them are quite frankly not quite ready to go to Purdue yet. You know, that's a big institution. I, I, I did my work at Penn State, a little bit of a competitor to Purdue, and, and not everybody is ready to go in and, and, and just be a, a, a part of a large group of people. Come to Ancilla, they're getting that personal attention, they're, they're maturing, and they're getting, by the time they walk out of Ancilla at the end of that sophomore year, they're ready to go and make a mark at any four-year institution. So it, it's a, it's a win-win, but yes, we have the room we have uh, space for it and, and would welcome uh, some good suits in that area. We're uh, speaking this morning to Mr. Ken Zirko, president of Ansella College, and also Todd Zeltwander, who's the vice president of development. 
Uh, now, tell us, I know you got a new facility there, dining room, and uh, I know you got another dorm under construction. Tell us about that. That's a pretty vigorous program. It is. And, and um, as, I, as I said earlier, I was open to, in the first year because we didn't begin marketing that program until late to have maybe 65 or 70 students show up for the residence hall. To have over 100 was rather astounding. Right now, as we're looking at the, the new residence, the second residence hall, actually will, we will take over ownership of that. Uh, the contractors will turn that over in early July. It will be completely finished earlier than last year, so we'll have more time. We already have 80-some students that are showing an interest in that new, the new residence hall. And it'll, it's identical to the first one, The right? The rooms themselves are. They're, they're identical. Uh, our our um, rooms are a little larger than what you find traditionally. And as a matter of fact, the parents that come in to visit us, and they, when they've been visiting other colleges, they're sort of shocked when they go in and see the size of the, room, the rooms that we have. And it's sort of neat. Each it's sort of like a Holiday Inn, if you will. Uh, each room has its own bathroom. You know, it. Yeah. You know, it's not like it was when I went to college. Yeah. You know, and, and no gang showers down the hall or anything like that. Each room has its own own the bathroom, and each room has its own heating unit, the PTAC unit. So they heat their air conditioning or heating. Instead of having to fight with the whole floor, you just fight with your roommate, and um, and it works out really quite well. Each floor has a study area built into the floor where students, if they don't want to study in their room, they can have quiet space to get together with some other students and study. Each room has its own laundry at no cost. So I, I tell mom and dad, you know, the kid's coming home with laundry on the weekend, he doesn't need to. He has, he has a space there to hold him accountable for it. You know? and, and, and then we've also, you know, each, each floor we have a recycling area. We take this recycling very seriously, and they're trying to instill that in the young students as well, that that's an important part of our future. And uh, then you have a large lobby with a uh, fireplace, beautiful, huge TV, and it's just very attractive. Now, the new, the new building is just being completed now. The rooms will be the same. The floor designs are the same. It'll be a different, different style of lobby. Uh, so a little character, you know, and, and the fireplace is stone that goes up 30 feet or whatever, and it just, it's uh, pretty attractive. Pretty good living conditions, actually. Okay, now you've mentioned about the uh, new ag school that you're starting there. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some uh, other offerings uh, uh, academically? Our, you know, we've been probably best known for nursing. We've had a strong and nursing. And have been for quite a while. Yeah, that's been a strong program. As a matter of fact, we've applied now for one of the nursing programs to, to become a four-year program. We want to remain a two-year college, but I'd sure like to see us be able to offer a four-year program in, in the nursing, probably in business and probably in criminal justice. Those are three very strong programs at Ancilla. And I think we have the people and, and the, the, the reputation and so forth, and, but that's going through the state, so it's step by step by step. The nursing, I think they've already, I know they've already submitted their material to try to, to get a bachelor's degree in, in the nursing program. We have, and then we have all the basics. Another new program coming on is culinary. Uh, tremendous opportunities, not just in this region, but literally all over the world uh, in the culinary area. And uh, so we're combining with our new cafeteria to start with and our new, the new cooking facilities there, which are second to none. And uh, we'll be getting the culinary program this fall. Wow. <laughs> you, got, you got two new programs coming on. Yes. The ag yeah. program and culinary. How do you teach culinary? You know, <laughs> you know. Very carefully. <laughs> it's, you know, it's really, uh, <clears throat> again, because the opportunities are so fantastic. Right. And it's one of those programs that you don't need to have a four-year degree to, to be a chef sure. and to, to have job opportunities all over. Sure. I was telling somebody a couple days ago, I have a friend in Pennsylvania whose, whose daughter was, went through the culinary program at, at a school there, and he was telling me, he said, she has, she has a maid. She took a job, she got a job on a cruise line. <laughs> now, she's single, you sure. know, and so in the summer they cruise up off up in the Alaska area, but that same cruise line then goes to the Caribbean in the winter. So his thing was to me, he says, 
you know, rough life. And then, but he said, unless she develops a, a serious gambling habit, she's going to save a lot of money because right. she's no place to spend it there. She's out right. on that ship all the time and, right. and uh, makes they make a good wage and uh, get to see different parts of the world. And, uh, so there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. And, and everybody knows cruise ships have exotic menus. menus, yeah, so, menu, yeah. So she'll learn a lot that way as well. Probably. So anyway, they, there's a lot of opportunities. We, as we look at new programs, my thing as the president is I want our people to focus on marketing. You know, what's needed out there? What, what program? I don't want to train a student for a job that used to be there, but what's there now and it looks even better 10 years down the road. <clears throat> so we're taking a hard look at those as, as we're exploring new programs. We can't be the same old, same old, right. we? Right. it would be in trouble. That's right. Todd, uh, some, you're interested in getting money and getting endowments. Uh, talk a yeah. little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, we have opportunities. We have a number of people that have set up scholarship programs that are named scholarships over time, and they set the criteria up, so I meet with a lot of couples and individuals to say, you know, who is it that you'd like to honor? Uh, and then those, that criteria then helps students come to us from you know, this area. We have a lot of students from Fulton County starting to, to come to us now and, and, uh, and the surrounding area. And then we do a, uh, so we do scholarships. We do uh, uh, called the Ancilla Fund, which is our, usually uh, appeal letters for our annual fund because we need those monies coming in too to help just the day-to-day -day operations and also the scholarships. Then we do special events. We organize those. We organize scholarship dinners. Uh, you're part of the Changing Lives Scholarship Dinner there, Dick, I know in the past and over the years. And we have a golf outing every June. This coming up June 13th, Monday afternoon at Swan Lake Resort. So if anybody's out there listening and like to come and play, all the money that's raised there during that outing then goes to helping uh, our students with scholarship money and all. And that's on our website, ancilla.edu. So I'd add one more program that Ken did mention was a sports management program that's oh, going to be happening out there too. The business side of sports, you know, the agents, the front office, maybe Frank Vogel might yeah. be available now to come and, and uh, be able to guest in uh, area too. But uh, uh, that's a program that I think with a lot of our student athletes at the, at the college that are there, that might be of interest to them and anybody else too. Thank you, uh, Ken and Todd, for coming by this morning. I have one little suggestion. Okay. You guys get, need to get more enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get, get sold on your product. When, when, you, when you have a good product, it's easy to be enthused about it. We didn't mention, by the way, we're starting lacrosse this fall. Oh, good. We're going to start women's lacrosse next year. Good. Uh, <clears throat> two of the fastest growing sports. Yeah. <clears throat> much so impressive. Okay. Right, yeah, wrestling. Yeah. Gonna have wrestling also. Oh yeah, that starts this fall. <coughs> okay, our uh, trivia this morning is what jockeys has won the most uh, derbies? Is it Eddie Arcaro, Bill Artak, or Mario Cudarez? What do you think? I don't know. I was gonna say Willie Shoemaker. So I'm yeah. Oh, well, we're <laughs> all out. Uh, um, how about Billy Hartak? Okay, uh, it's a little trick question because okay. they, they tied uh, oh. Eddie and Bill, okay. both have won five, and this uh, Mario is riding the favorite. Okay. We'll see how he does. Let's close with this uh, Words of Wisdom by uh, the author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, Harriet Beecher. So, uh, so right. most mothers are instinctive philosophers. <laughs> well, so, happy Mother's Day out there. Hey, yeah, yeah. Dick Culture, thank you very much. Dr. Ken, Todd, thank you guys thank for you being here. Much. Scott, thank as you. always, nice to have you in the studio as well. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.